everybody welcome to another flower making video today is the first of three small videos fun with foliage I'm going to start with the caladium so I'll drop you down and you'll be able to see what we're going to do I might need to turn you around because I think you'll possibly be upside down so I'll just turn the camera around let me flip it there we go now here we go here's the caladium comes in all kinds of different colours, it's an absolutely beautiful foliage, filler and it can be any colour you like. This wonderful piece of inspiration was sent to me, I'll move this chap out the way now. So today I'm going to show you how to do some different uh, colourings on these caladiums. I'm going to start by showing you how to actually make the caladium in like a blank, so I make it in white first. And then I go from there. So I'm going to begin by making a blank white caladium. Let's get rid of the, the little bits of dust that are on there. And I'll start. I'm going to use Robert Haynes's flower paste. Um, I've got the um, the veiners are from Squires. They're the Squires uh, caladium veiners. Uh, Great Impressions leaf veiners. So that's this one and that's the the largest leaf veiner i could get to make the caladium with and the best quality at the moment that i can find and i'm about to start with the white start with robert's flower paste now robert's flower paste is like silk it's, it's very new uh, it's the best on the market in my view i've used smart flex and platinum paste and all kinds of other pla pastes piece of cake paste is brilliant from tame but this is the rolls royce this is my open packet what i do is i cut slices off this because this comes and it's rock hard it's so hard you feel you'll never be able to knead it up and it smells delicious so what i do is i i cut a piece off i cut pieces off about this thick and then i put the rest away that means I always have a fresh piece of paste for each different leaf that I'm making so this is hard and you think you're never going to be able to knead it up so the easiest way to knead up this paste is to twist it give it a little twist and away you go and it soon loosens up once you twist it and then you can see already just by simply twisting it's just loosening up all the way round and then I don't usually need paste up on on camera because it, it's a boring technique and it takes too long but this even on a cold day this this is quite good if you live in a very very cold climate obviously um, it's a little bit more difficult perhaps but I would just recommend that you keep your paste um, on a little wheat bag. These microwave wheat bags are very useful. So in, in winter I just pop mine on a, on a wheat bag next to me so that it just keeps it nice and warm whilst I'm using it. Paste does need to be nice and warm. Can you see how this now, even just as I'm talking to you, is coming together and it's pretty elastic already. So I've hardly had anything to do with this paste except just warm it in my hands and give it a quick knead up. That's ready to We're use going to now. now. Create the skeleton. You need a skeleton to put your leaf on because it's a biggish leaf, and in order for it to support its weight, you need to make a little skeleton. This one's green, but I'm usually making them in white because I make the leaves in white and the green shows through. But for the camera, the green's better just for you to see what I'm doing. So I'm taking a 24 gauge wire and two 28 gauge wires today. You can use 26 wires, doesn't really matter, but the thicker the wires are, the more likely they are to show through your paste. You've got to decide whether you need that heavy, heavier wire or not. Depends on how thick your own paste is. So I take my two 28s and I take a 24. And it's a very simple process. This is the 24. 
I decide how far down the leaf I want the uh, the wire to come and it's got to go down through the little hole. Ah, I forgot to tell you. This has been modified. I've cut a hole in the middle of it so that the wire will go down through the middle. That's my own adaptation. They don't come with that. This one goes down to there and I bend it and the other one likewise. So I bend that just about the same like that. So you've got you've got three wires now. Two slightly shorter and one longer. So all I need to do is to take a piece of florist's tape, stretch it to get the glue to release, and I'm going to tape all these together. Whoops. Too enthusiastic there. Snap my tape off. Okay. Push it up to the top. And twizzle it down. All the time I'm twizzling, I'm push pulling with, with my left hand to tension it, and I'm twizzling with the right, and my fingers on my right hand are coming down, squeezing this all the way down to squash it onto the wires tightly. So now I've got a little skeleton. So I've got my 24 gauge and my 28 gauges at the back. What I need to do is to shorten them slightly once they're on here. Just decide where they're going to go. Now this will poke out because when I'm going to turn this back, this wire will poke out. So I need to chop it off a little bit, probably just about there, so that it just gives the strength. Now pull down in that center and then bend over these wires so that they fit into the um, the little sort of gullies that are in your, the little vein tracks that are in your veiner. Okay, so there you've got that shape. Okay, so if you can see that, uh, that shape of, let's move him down to there, you can see now that he's got a shape that's curved inwards to the centre and it's going to fit your um oh it's not very good is it doesn't doesn't show you very well on there but I think you can see it will fit your um your vein quite well so that's finished with now what I need to do next is to do the paste so I've got my nice paste all nice and warm, easy to roll. Okay, so I'm going to take a lump of this, nice lump of this gobstopper size, give it a roll, ready to go. And I'm just going to roll this so that it's reasonably thin, not as thin as you would have for petals. You can see I've got no tracks, I've got nothing on the board, I've got nothing and it, it won't stick. So here we go. Moderately thick, much thicker than a petal but not as thick as a thick clumpy leaf. You can see that it is fairly see-through. You can see my hand through it but it's not thick enough to, uh, not thin enough to be like uh, a petal would be. So I've taken one of these and I'm just going to push it in. Now for the video I'll give it an extra push because it'll make a big outline then and you should be able to see it. I'll turn that one around a bit. Now they don't matter whether they're whole or not and I'm just going to cut round now the basic shape and I'm not worrying too much about the actual lines that I've got for the moment because that will come in in a little while. So I'm just cutting around and I like these sort of ears here to be a fair size. So that one's an odd size but it'll be fine later on. Now I'll put this back because this is lovely stuff so I'll just knead it back up again. 
and pop that back into a bag to keep warm for the next leaf. Now this I'm just going to shape out a little bit because I think I've made him too narrow there. So I'm going to pop him onto here. Now because I'm using Robert's Paste I don't need anything on this veiner. If I was using different kinds of paste I would definitely put cornflour on my veiner, maybe even Trex, but not today. So I'm just going to put this across here. Yep. Just tuck that in because we don't need all that. Now you can see roughly where things are on this. That's it. So that's on there. And I can see that it's not quite to the edge. Now these have a nice edge on them if you can get it. But quite often it's difficult to get the edge. Anyway, I'm going to use some glue. This is just um, a little pot with some glue in it. Some it, This is Tylo powder and um, water with a little bit of alcohol in it to preserve it. So that's all it is. Just as the recipe on the Tylo container says, I think it's about 30 to 1 water. One, 30 parts water to one of uh, Tylo powder. Now I'm, I'm covering the whole of the surface of this leaf at the moment. I'm not drenching it because I've only got a small brush and if you if you rub it with your finger there shouldn't be any great blobs of it on there. Now the next thing to do is to put your wires down through the centre there we go and they should pull into position nicely. The next thing to do is to get your leaf top and you start try to keep it under the camera pop the wire on the on the base there so it came up the wire came up right I'm making sure the edges go together at the moment so I'm going to put the edges together this side like that. I'm not worrying about the wrinkle in the middle for a minute because I'll uh, I'll peel this one up. Now I'm going to make these edges go together over here because I can always trim the edges back later. That's it. But I won't need to because with Robert's paste it's like silk as I say so it'll it'll just ease itself in where we need it. There we go. Now that is on there. I want this a little bit bigger at this side so I'm just going to ease it out like that. Okay and that raggedy edge there in a minute I'll trim back with a scalpel. So here we go because these are rather simple leaves. So I've put the lid on and I'm going to turn it over. Now I press hard. I'll get rid of my glue before I tip it. Okay, so I press hard all the way around. Now I'm trying to impress as many veins as I can without bringing the, um, the wires through the paste. So I'm trying to sort of go around the edges as well as the centre. There we go. So I lift up, take off the top and as you can see we've got the leaf already embossed with the, the pattern. Now at this stage I can see that the veiner itself doesn't have a, a great definition to it. Um, they're very tiny veins in these so what I do before I take it out of the um, Hang on, I need a um, tool here. Hang on. Before I take it out of the veiner, I use the veiner as support and I get a Dresden tool. And I just go around the outside because the beauty of these is when they're dusted and painted and coloured, this edge makes a superb feature because the 
caladium itself has a lovely edge to it and you have to make sure that these center ones if you're going to run the color down from the center you have to make sure that the gullies here run out from the center so that when the color comes down here it's actually not it, it, it's got the gully continues all the way through like that instead of having maybe the vein starting with a gap because if, the, if there's gap between the vein and the the center vein it won't run through so you have to connect them all up to the center vein so that they actually do run through and then so we go like that okay and then we put in some side ones now you can do this this can take a very long time if you want great detail in your leaf so I'm not going to spend a great deal of time doing this you get the general gist of it I'm just going to put in a few and then uh, we'll come back to trimming the edges then but as you can see I'm joining things up so that they, when they run when I run the color down it will run all the way through these from the centers there we go now at risk of boring you silly I'm going to stop there and I'm going to lift this off the veiner and I'm going to trim the edges okay now I've got a few ragged edges here so I'm just going to trim around trim around the odd raggedy edge just a little bit now the reason this is this is just one item of foliage that I really don't thin around the edges because when you dust it you want that nice thick edge to take the color um, so normally I have a really thin edge that makes a beautiful thin edge all the way around but this time I actually want the the edges to be a bit uneven so that when it makes the if you look at the colored ones let me show you the the colored ones if you look at the colored ones say this edge for instance I want this focus Let's see if I can get a closer focus on this edge view. How close will that go? If I hold it still, it might focus in a minute. Come on. Yeah, there we go. It's getting there. There, that edge, oh, it's that edge there, I want to be really um, absorbing the color and making a really dark edge so that when we do that it creates that lovely contrast of color on the edges and that I do by not having a lovely smooth bore tooled edge that I would normally have on a petal so that's that's as it is now I'll take you back out a step so we've got that now this needs to dry um, I'm going to push that into there because I like that rounded in there I don't like it to be don't like it to be too um, uniform in here I just think that makes it quite ugly looking if it's if it's not a good shape in there I do like a good shape in that little bit because I think that bits quite a feature of the the plant itself so I'll come back round now I'll put the little bit of that's it just comes around there and sometimes I'll use the scissors if it's um, if it's not quite straight and, um, there we go. it's worth playing with because when you run those colors in later on it'll be fine it'll be better now I use sponges for all kinds of things um, I will use a sponge like this this is from um, a cheap shop uh, K 
chemist of Poundland or somewhere and I just cut the centre out with a big scissors. I just snip, 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 snip all the way around the centre. And then these I use for all kinds of things. I poke a big hole in it, cut a big hole in it. Then I can push down into the centres so that you get that kind of thing. But the beauty of it is you can still turn over this edge, making sure I get my point. which I haven't made sure that I got my oh I'd be shot if I was going for competition now uh, I forgot to make sure that this centre vein came down into the there you are he's a wonky centre vein but he's going down into that uh, point there always make sure your centre veins go down into the points because they look better there we go so that needs to dry once that's dry I'm going to do my best demonstrator video spares here now. I'm just going to get rid of this. Let's get that off there. And I am going to bring in now one of my leathery leaves. So let's have this one. This one's a nice one. He's nice. I like him. He's nice. This is leathery. It's not completely dry. It's a little bit bendy. Just a little bit of give in that but it's quite hard. So I'm going to dust this one up. So if I can stop saying so, we'll move on. So <laughs> here we go. I've got some colors. I've got a range of colors here that I'm going to use. I think I'm going to try a green wash to start with and I'm going to do a green wash with red lines because that's a nice one to do. So I've got a rich green. These are all Robert Haynes's edible petal dusts and I've got a rainbow dust ruby which I quite like as well as well as an intense red. So this is rich green, I've got soft green and I've got dark green. I've also got bright red ruby and intense red so i i haven't used bright red much but i think it would be quite nice to have a bit of a more vibrant red in it rather than than the the dark dull red the intense red is um is quite a darkish color so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some of those i'll get my little oops get the brushes now this is all on my tray. I keep all these on a tray because it's it keeps the colour together. I'm going to lift those off there and then I can put my colours up there. Because this is going to be a wash I'm using dipping solution. This is Culpit dipping solution which is 96% um, food grade ethanol. Um, you can use uh, ordinary ethanol but this is this is quite easy to get hold of culpit dipping solution and I'm going to use a nice long bristled brush which is going to give me a very nice wash starting with some green I'm going to use rich green mixed with soft green so I'm going to put a bit of mix a bit of rich green Put a bit of rich green and I'm going to put a bit of soft green. Oh. These little pots are brilliant. They come with these little insides to them which stops in in the drawer it stops them um, leaking everywhere in your drawer. So I find that quite good quite often when you've got a whole load of colours together. It, um, actually I'm going to put some of that soft green as a separate colour. Now the dark green I'm going to put as a dry dust on here and you'll see why in a minute. So these are in a, a small egg tray or palette and uh, 
those are going to be my green wash now this I'm going to put into the the rich green and into the soft green and I'm putting quite a bit in because to create a wash you need quite a lot of alcohol now that dissolves up beautifully with little or no trouble at all so that's my dark one and this is going to be my light one now I'm going to put my light wash on first these don't take very long to dry at all and what I want to do is to texture the leaf now I'm going to do a nice wash on this leaf so I've got plenty of dipping solution in with my soft green. I'll make that a little bit more light, a little bit lighter. And I'm going to try and do this in the centre where you can see it. And I'm just washing this leaf completely like this, all the way down. It's a bit mucky, but just like that so that you've got the barest of colour washed into your leaves, into your veins rather. Now whilst it's still wet I'm going to run the darker colour into the veins just from the centre while it's all still wet and that's going to give me a lovely texture on the centre of my leaf. Now whilst that's drying, I can then let the, there's a little bit of a drip on the tip, so I'm just going to take the drip off there. I'm going to drop a bit of red into there now. A bit of red. Now this depends on how much or how strong you want your red. My red's not strong enough at the moment so I'm just going to put that there and I'm going to add some more ruby to this because I think ruby would be good. Pop a bit more ruby in there. I think I let that down a little bit too much. So whilst this is still all wet let's mix that in. I wanted a little bit darker ruby. This is where I usually mess most of mine up. There we go. Not too bad. Okay. I'm going to turn it round and go the other way. I'm going to go this way. Now the hard bit getting it into the side pieces Ooh. <laughs> I told you it was the difficult bit now I need to get some of that out of there it's too much okay but that will be okay I'll try this side and then uh, just try a little bit on that side this is where the, the knack comes in as to how much you drop down these veins and you have to do it whilst it's all wet because once it's dry it doesn't run the same so once the green underneath is dry as you can see it's not running the same so you have to be fairly quick but that's okay because I'll uh, I think I've got enough colour there now Then in a minute I can add some more perhaps to that centre. So we've got a nice amount of colour coming out of there. We haven't got any down here but 
I can add it, but I'll probably ruin it. So maybe less is more. Whilst it's uh, now it's dried, it's best to just leave it. You can add more alcohol. But I'm just going to leave that to dry a little bit now. And then in a minute, I'm going to add some intense red to the centre. There we go. So a little tiny bit of intense red just there, which I'm going to put into the centre of my leaf. And before this leaf dries, finally, I will add some... Um, now there's a little bit of... Uh, alcohol in that one which I'm going to add. So I'm going to dust, I'm just going to colour this in the centre a little bit deeper colour. So that's going to give it a little bit, bit more of a, a colour there. And whilst it's still wet you can dab the colour in and then must make sure that it runs a little bit out of the uh, the veins so that it all melds in there we go right now that's as much as I'm going to do with the colors and um, that's better. There we go. That now will have mixed the colours a little bit because I've added a, a third colour in there. There we go. And then um, by the time we've done those, they can. Uh, they'll all be dry. So that's pretty, pretty dry. And that is the colour of our caladium. We now need to set it, dry it and dip it. So that has to be dried overnight. Okay, I'm back. And this is our completed leaf. It's dried, it's glazed and I've edged the very tips with some dark green so it's now ready to go into the rest of the arrangement with the rest of our caladiums there we go I'll add that I can wire that in later on so here she is I'll just sit her down there so thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed making the caladium with me there's a whole multitude of colors and textures to to the caladium family and I hope you'll be quite adventurous in the use of your uh, your glazes and your uh, your washes so thank you for watching I've enjoyed being with you and I hope you'll drop in on me again thank you very much bye <laughs>